Computers have come a long way over the past 50 years, but just how far ahead are we now than we were in the 1970s? And if cars had developed at the same rate, where would they be now? Let's find out. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. On this channel we have a lot of fun playing with older computers and technology and it all works very well and we can have loads of fun playing with the games and the consoles. But of course um, the machines that we have today are, are, are far much more powerful than those that we had in the 1980s and so on. But sometimes it's, it's quite hard to visualise just how far behind those retro computer systems actually are. Now you, you've probably heard of something called Moore law, Moore's Law for computing power, where, where somebody called Gordon Moore, who was one of the founders of Intel, he noticed that the number of transistors that you could fit onto an integrated circuit was doubling every two years. And this was back in 1965. And people thought that that um, process might continue for uh, another decade or so. But 60 years later, um, it's still a fairly accurate benchmark. So if we were to use that equation then, um, we should have about 2 to the power of 30 times more computing power on our desktop compared to what we would have had in 1965. And that's just over 1 billion times more powerful. But is that actually true? So, so even comparing um, to a 1980s 8-bit computer, we should be over a million times better with our computers today. So, so a million times more powerful, or, or even a billion times, it, that, that's where it becomes hard then to actually, actually visualise what that means. So in this video, we'll have a look at the, those claims, and then try to get a grasp of just how far computers have progressed. We'll then compare computer technology advances to something more tangible, so, so car technology, and then see which set of engineers have been working the hardest. So let's get ready for a bit of research and a bit of maths. So let's start by looking at your desktop computer. We'll use the Apple range of computers as they've probably been around then for the longest. So if we go back to um, 1977, we get to their first really usable computer, which was the Apple II. Now this is an 8-bit computer powered by the good old 6502, running at a blistering, well, well blistering for the time, 1 megahertz. Now if you had enough money, you could team this with a whopping 48 kilobytes of RAM, and then add a disk drive to store your data on 114 kilobyte, five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Now all of this would set you back around about three thousand dollars or two and a half thousand pounds. So allowing for inflation, that's probably equivalent to around sixteen thousand dollars or around twelve and a half thousand pounds in today's money. Now, in terms of computing power, a lot of people use the processor clock speed, but I don't really think that that gives a true picture these days when we have multiple cores and modern computer architectures. So, so today uh, we'll be using computer power measured in the number of calculations the hardware can do per second. So, so this is usually measured in floating point operations per second, or, or flops. Now the 6502 doesn't actually have built-in support for floating point, so we're going to have to estimate its power based on it doing a number of integer operations to generate a floating point calculation. Now it, it seems that the general measure seems to be about 40 instructions per floating point calculation. So this then gives us the 6502 running at around 25,000 flops or, or 25 kiloflops. So in 1977, this was still seen as a premium device for a home user. So if we fast forward then to 2024, we can use Apple's latest top of the range desktop, the Apple Mac Pro. So this device uses Apple's latest M2 processor, which is a 28 core CPU running at 3.5 gigahertz. Now again, if you can afford Apple's prices, you can team this up 
with um, 192 gigabytes of RAM and then 8 terabytes of SSD storage space. So this nice little package will set you back around about $7,000 or, or rather disappointingly actually the similar price in, in pounds, so £7,000 as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure why we pay more in the UK for all these things, but anyway. Looking at processing power then, um, uh, again, we're going to be looking at just the power of the CPU. I'm, I'm going to ignore the GPU. Um, obviously, that, that is a separate processing system inside the computer, and that will just keep it simple for us. So with the M2 processor, we've got a massive 27.2 teraflops. Now, now that is 27 with 12 zeros after it flops, floating operations um, per second. So if we now start to try and compare then our, our old figures and our new figures, we, we can sort of line them up and just see how well those electronic engineers have been doing over the past 47 years. So, so top billing, of course, has to go to processing power. So this is sort of what Moore's law is hinting at with the transistor count, but obviously it's, it's quite a bit more complicated than just that. So our 1977 Apple II managed that 25K flops and our latest Mac Pro 27.2 teraflops. So that's actually an increase of 1 billion times. So that's 10 to the power of 9 or 1,000 million. So if, th if that number seems a tad more than what our Moore's Law predicted, which was a, a million times better, um, we, we do have to, of course, manipulate that number a wee bit. So we the Moore's Law then predicted us a, a 1 million times improvement due to the increase in density of transistors on our integrated circuits. But if we think as well, we are actually running those integrated circuits 1000 times faster because we've jumped from megahertz speeds up to gigahertz speeds. So if we multiply those two together, that does actually then give us our, our 1000 million or our 1 billion times better, which is what Moore predicted. So, so, so well done, Mr. Moore. Looking at RAM then, we've gone from our 48K Apple II to our 192 gigabyte Mac Pro. So that constitutes a rise of 4 million times. And similarly then, on the storage front, we've gone from a 114 kilobyte um, floppy disk up to an 8 terabyte hard disk. So again, that's another rise of 70 million times. Now finally we come to the price. Now it'd be very easy to pick something like a Raspberry Pi and say that oh the price has dropped by 300 times or whatever that is. But I, I have picked now the Apple II when it came out was a business machine and it was top end. So I am going to compare it then as I say with this Apple Mac Pro which is the same sort of situation. So in this situation then um, we the price has really sort of halved rather than gone down by sort of a massive amount. Um, so again we're Comparing like for like, computers are still expensive, and I think that is going to stay true as we go along. Okay, you get a lot more for your money, but um, you still do have to fork out that cash at the beginning. So we've now got an idea of how far computers have come uh, from first generation machines then to the latest model. So, so how does this compare to automotive engineering? So let's see if the engineers at Porsche have actually been keeping up and doing their work properly. So the iconic Porsche 911 was launched in 1964 and it had a 145 horsepower engine and that gave it a top speed of 132 miles per hour and a not to 60 miles per hour acceleration of nine seconds. Now you're only gonna get, or well, you did only get about 15 miles per gallon of petrol, but even so, these are pretty good figures for that day. Now all of this would set you back around six and a half thousand dollars. So if we scale that up um, using today's inflation, um, obviously we get then to around about sixty-five thousand dollars in today's money. So fast forwarding to today, if you were to purchase one of the current Porsche 911 models, um, and I'm going to use here the Porsche 992 GT3. So this is a 510 horsepower car that can hit 199 miles per hour and reach 60 miles per hour from standstill in only 3.4 seconds. 
Now you're still only getting about 14 miles per gallon and it is now going to set you back about $180,000. So we want to be able to compare this car development figures with our computer development. So we do need to sort of line up some of the figures to see how well each set of engineers is doing. So of course, cost is fairly straightforward. We just compare our costs. Top speed then? Um, well, I'm going to use computing power, as that's actually a pretty good measure of how fast the computer is actually going. For engine power, um, well, let's use processor clock speed, and why not? Um, if you do have a better idea, then do please let me know in the comments down below. But for today, I'm going to use that. For not to 60 time, then we'll use RAM. Um, so we all know that you need RAM to keep that computer speed up. Miles per gallon then, that's a slightly more tricky, cal tricky calculation. So if we think about how far the car has gone and how much fuel it's used, we can sort of compare that to how many calculations the computer can do on a certain amount of electrical power. So if we use the power rating of the whole computer, we can then calculate the number of joules of energy that that computer is using every second. And as we've already calculated then, we can see how many floating point calculations it can do in that one second. So this will of course then give us a calculations per joule figure. So for our Apple II at 35 watts for total system power, we come to 714 floating, operation, floating point operations um, or, or calculations if you want to call it that, per joule of energy. For our Mac Pro then, it runs at 250 watts on full power. And for that, that gives us a figure of 100 gigaflops per joule. So 100 times 10 to the power of nine calculations per joule of energy. So that then gives us an idea of how we can now compare our car engineering improvements to our electronic engineering improvements. So let's first of all have a look at cost. So our Porsche then has gone up in price by almost threefold in, in real terms, whereas our Apple um, computer then has actually halved its cost. So that's again a, a pretty good win then for computers. F for power then, so car, the, the car engine itself has pretty much quadrupled its engine power. And then as I said, as we're looking at computer clock speeds, we're pretty much a thousand times faster these days because uh, we're now moving from megahertz up to gigahertz. On the acceleration side, so our Porsche now gets to 60 miles per hour in a third of the time, so a threefold increase in acceleration. But on the other hand, our, our computer RAM is now four million times larger than it was in 1977. So again, we can see here that our computer technology is progressing at a, at a much faster speed. So, so top speed then, um, well, well let, let, let's be kind and say that the Porsche engineers have managed to double the speed of their cars in that 60 year period. Whereas over that um, same amount of time, well, actually less amount of time for our, our, our 40 years, um, Apple have actually made their computers one billion times faster as we saw there previously in that floating point operations per second. So, so our fuel economy then? Well, the automotive industry um, really hasn't made any significant improvements in fuel economy, especially at this performance end. On the computing side, however, we're now 140 million times more efficient. So, obviously computing has moved on a, a, a hell of a lot faster than our car technology. So, so where really should car technology be if it was going to move at the same pace? So we know now that um, we have got a much better performance from our computing. So it just does show us just how much better electronic engineers, like myself obviously, are than these mechanical and aeronautical engineers that are the ones who are sort of mostly employed then in this car industry. So, so let's take a look at what sort of specs we would have expected from the latest Porsche if they had have ditched all of those hit it with a hammer people and used electronics experts instead. So let me reveal to you my vision for the brand new Porsche ZX24 
Turbo Super GT Targa XP. So this car then, it would be powered by our latest 145,000 horsepower engine. That would give it a 0 to 60 acceleration time of 2.5 millionths of a second. So those are 2.5 microseconds. And then of course, we would have a top speed of 132 billion miles per hour. Now, price-wise, it, it's still a little bit steep, so we're, it's going to cost you around about $33,000. But our fuel economy is a tad better at 2 billion miles per gallon. So that's going to give us a, a round trip to Saturn and back in under one minute for about $5 or £5. So hopefully then, um, we've had a bit of fun playing around with these stats. But I do hope that it does bring home to you just how far we've come with our computer technology. And if, if, if Moore's Law continues to hold, how far we could go. Now, I, I know there is a lot of talk these days about um, AI and, and how far that's going and how we can get to this idea of a singularity. So, so that is when computers reach the same levels of processing power and, and artificial intelligence as the human brain. So we, we call that singularity. So as you can see, if, if Moore's law does hold out, that's probably not as far away as it might seem. So something that we do have to think about. So. On that cheerful note, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more computing, games and electronics projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.